Hi everyone, welcome to the ICE T workshop. Um, I'm here with Linda Black Elk and we're going to um, begin the ICE T workshop. So from here on, I'll be doing the directive and are doing it on hand and Linda Elk, Black Elk will begin doing the teaching. So take awesome. over Linda. Yay, awesome. Hi everybody. Um, thank you so much for having me back to teach another workshop. Um, Right now, today, up uh, in Minnesota, it's not terribly hot, but I did look at the upcoming weather report, and it's going to be almost 100 degrees all week next week. And I always find that this kind of weather is fantastic for iced tea. Um, and it's so, it's so funny because whenever I ask my students a question like, what kind of tea are you drinking when you drink Lipton or Louisiana or any of those like green teas? What kind of plant is that? Almost none of my students um, or even friends can ever answer that. And so I wanted to tell you that if you just get like a box of tea from the store, it's usually a plant called camellia. Um, and that's pretty good tea. But did you know that you can actually make iced tea from any of your favorite herbs and herbal medicines? Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that today and then Anita is gonna demonstrate how to make that. So I'm gonna just share my screen here with you all. Um, and we're gonna talk about some of my favorite iced teas for every day, um, but we are going to um, have Anita start <laughs> demonstrating here let me let my screen pop up um so iced teas can actually still be very medicinal but also be cooling at the same time and so um we're going to focus on two really amazing iced teas today uh and i'll talk about their medicinal properties in a moment but first we're gonna get this tea started and steeping so that by the end, you can actually see Anita drinking it. Um, we are using two herbs today. Anita, uh, can you tell everyone what two herbs you have? So we have rose hips and spearmint in here. Yep, delicious. That is one of my favorite tea combinations. I'll talk again, um, I'll talk about all the medicinal properties of that in just a bit. But first I wanted to say that you can make, I, I know, Indigenous people love sun tea. <laughs> and I think that, you know, everyone uses their old pickle jar, right? Um, to put out on their porch and make sun tea. Um, I grew up doing that and I know a lot of you do too, uh, but you can use any jar to make sun tea, any container. Um, and, uh, it, and it's very simple. So here are the directions. I'll go ahead and send this PowerPoint off to Anita so that she can email it out to any of you so that you can have access to it later. But this is just a basic sun tea recipe uh, for using medicinal herbs. And of course, we're using rose hips and mint today. And um, so to your big jar, you would, if we were making this a sun tea in bulk, you would add a quarter cup of rose hips and two teaspoons of mint. Um, make sure to put them into a tea bag or a sachet or a tea ball. Uh, Anita, can you show them the tea ball that you have? Yeah, you can use a few of those um, if you're making sun tea. And you just fill your jar with cold water, add the tea balls in there and let them sit for a while. And then of course, add any sweetener you want, but try not to use white sugar. Um, Anita is gonna use honey today. And uh, then you just enjoy it and your whole family can enjoy it that way. Since Anita is actually um, making the tea today, just mostly um, for her individually, you can make iced tea quickly and you can make it in small batches. And so Anita um, added, can you show them your filled tea ball, Anita? So that one already has our tea blend in there. Um, it's about, that's about half of what we need. Um, that's about half a tablespoon of rose hips and two teaspoons of mint um, that she already has um, uh, mixed together. So can you show them, um, I'm gonna stop my share here real quick so that you can show them how to fill a tea ball and they can see it really easily. These tea balls are inexpensive and super, um, easy to find. They even sell them in places like Walmart these days. Go ahead, Anita. 
Okay, I'm trying to share this. <laughs> okay, so here's the mix. It's a mix of equal um, spearmint and rose hips. It's just equal. You can buy these really anywhere. Um, loose teas, I got these um, in the city. If you're in the city, I got these at, um, at any kind of natural herb store and you just, you buy them loose. So then I usually just take- at present moments? Yep, at present moments and awesome. or really anywhere else. But present moments sells them loose. They have a whole wall full of herbs. Awesome. Herbs and you can mix them any kind. And then I just have these tea balls which they came in your kit. You got one of those in your kit. And then you're just gonna fill it up as you see and close it. Yep, it has a little lock. It has a little lock and you close it. And then it ends up looking like this. And awesome. this is your tea ball. And it's basically a tea bag. You know, yep. if you were to buy the tea bag. So. That's right, a reusable tea bag. That's perfect. And um, and because she's making kind of, so, so we're making quick iced tea. And can you show them your cup of ice? So this ice, when we pour our warm tea over the top of that, some of the ice is gonna melt. So we obviously want to make our herbal tea really strong. That's why I'm having her use two tea balls. Um, but if you're doing this for a kid who you think maybe won't like as strong of that tea flavor, you can absolutely um, just, uh, I'm going to share my screen again. You can absolutely just use one tea ball if you want. Um, but we're trying to make a really strong tea, uh, which is basically almost like a tea concentrate. And that's why she's using two tea balls. So um, now, Anita, uh, yep, exactly. Put those tea balls into your hot water. She um, has uh, about um, three cups or so of hot water going. And um, she's gonna let those, you can take it off the heat and let it steep now for about 20 minutes. Was that water boiling, Anita? Yes, it was. Awesome, okay, perfect. So we're gonna let that sit for about 20 minutes um, and then we'll finish up our tea. But I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about these herbs. She's gonna set her timer there cause she's smart. <laughs> <laughs> and you can really, you can let it steep and you can let it go for a long time. Um, so uh, one of the herbs that we're using is wild rose hips. And those are the berries off of the rose bush. And the Dakota name of uh, wild rose is Unjijinka. The Ojibwe name is Ogin or Oginik. Uh, and so, um, I'm sorry, I didn't write the Ojibwe name down, but um, you know, uh, this is a really important traditional tea and traditional food um, that's a fantastic medicine. You guys have probably heard me say a million times that food is medicine, and I feel like rose hips are one of the best examples of that. Um, rose hips, those, those little tiny rose berries, you see where I'm pointing here? These little tiny rose berries are absolutely jam-packed with vitamin C. Okay, um, vitamin C, we're, we're, we're talking like uh, two of these rose hips, two or three of these rose hips have more vitamin C than a grapefruit. And um, vitamin C is important because it boosts our immune system and helps us fight off infection. Okay, so if you know someone who is going to go through surgery, if you know someone who catches a cold or maybe got COVID and they're really worried about pneumonia, which is a lung infection, then you can absolutely give them rose hip tea, uh, even as an iced tea, uh, every single day. Rose hip tea is very safe. It's safe for um, uh, older people and it's safe for children. In fact, rose hips are so safe that you can eat them. You can put your rose hips, like look down here in the left-hand corner, um, that's some rose hip jelly uh, that you can make. And you can find all sorts of rose hip jelly recipes online. It's delicious. Uh, rose hips taste kind of like a cross between an apple and a cranberry, I always say. Uh, my son thinks they're a little more tart than a cranberry, but they're really delicious. And right now, I was actually out, so so right now we are in, um, toward the middle to the end of July, 
And I was out yesterday and the rose hips are still slightly green. Okay. So you want to wait until they turn that nice red color. All right. Um, now I will say, so these are the rose petals. Those are so beautiful. And if you've never smelled a wild rose, make it one of your uh, things to put on your bucket list because wild roses smell absolutely amazing. So much better than like Valentine roses, right? So, um, and, and these rose petals are also totally edible. They are very high in vitamin C also. And earlier in the season, like around uh, mid June, early to mid June, the roses are blooming and you can collect these rose petals and dry them for tea as well. They're not quite as high in vitamin C as the rose hips, but they certainly have a beautiful fra fragrance and flavor. So you can use those. Um, so, uh, but right now we're focused on rose hips. And I wanted to say, look at this picture in the bottom right hand corner. Notice those tiny little sharp hairs that are on these rose hips. Okay. Now, if you're making tea with rose hips, you want to make sure um, with, with whole rose hips, right? So the rose hips still look like this. You haven't broken them apart or anything or, or removed the seeds. If you're gonna do that, that's fine. But you wanna make sure to filter those hairs out because they can kind of be irritating to your digestive system. And a lot of you guys have probably heard me tell the story of Ikdomi, the trickster spider, um, and how he was going around eating all the rose hips, but he wasn't removing the seeds. He was being super greedy and kind of as a punishment, um, those hairs got stuck in his digestive system. Um, and I won't, I won't go into detail, but I will tell you that the name of that story in English is Ikdomi and the Itchy Ass Berries. <laughs> Pardon my language. <laughs> so uh, make sure to remove the seeds, but if you don't remove the seeds, that's fine. You can make the tea with the whole rose hips. Just make sure you filter them out. And Anita, I think you're using de-seeded rose hips today, aren't you? Um, I think so. I'm not sure. Yeah, just the pieces in there. I kind of saw them. So those already have the seeds removed. Um, which is very convenient. And if you go to a place like present moments, yep, that's, let me see that a little closer. Oh yeah, that's a piece of a rose hip. So those already have the seeds taken out. And if you go to a herb shop like present moments in the cities, or if you go to one of the co-ops like Seward Co-op or a place like that, they do sell de-seeded rose hips. So it kind of saves you the trouble of having to remove the seeds, um, and which is very convenient, uh, especially if you are a busy mom, a busy parent, um, or if you're an elder and you just, you know, you're, you maybe you have arthritis in your hands, it's kind of can be tough to remove the seeds from all those little rose hips. But um, I really suggest going out, developing a relationship with this gorgeous plant, Ujijinka um, or Ogin, Oginig, and, um, you know, learning to recognize it and um, being able to harvest your own rose hips because they taste so amazing and you can use them in all sorts of things. So again, super high in vitamin C. One of the reasons we want this in our iced tea is because this is so nice this time of year. If you're someone who's prone to allergies, seasonal allergies, right now my allergies have been going crazy. And so I've been drinking all kinds of tea, um, but rose hip tea is really great for preventing sinus infections this time of year which often result from allergies. Um, and so, uh, you know, boosting our immune system also, we're still in the midst of another COVID wave. Uh, so if we want to prevent those lung infections due to COVID, it's great. Um, vitamin C and, and all other compounds in rose hips are very anti-inflammatory. So wonderful for reducing sinus inflammation, uh, those itchy, watery eyes and things like that. So rose hips, amazing medicine and amazing food, beautiful in our iced tea. Okay. Um, uh, and I just wanted to show you some more pictures of beautiful roses. Uh, you know, and, and I also wanted to say like, we can also make like take our leftover rose hips that have had the seeds removed and make things like this. This is a rose hip orange muffin instead of a cranberry orange muffin. That's a rose hip orange muffin. And this is beautiful as well. We've just taken some fresh rose hips and put them into some apple cider vinegar to make rose hip vinegar. 
beautiful. You can use it in salad dressings and all kinds of stuff. It's gorgeous, okay? Um, the other herb that we're using today in our tea is spearmint. And um, it grows wild all over Minnesota. We actually found some of this yesterday and the smell is just unbelievable. Um, wild mint is delicious. You can eat it. This is actually a pasta dish with um, a little bit of mint and feta cheese and olive oil um, and you know salt and pepper uh, mixed with some veggies. Absolutely fantastic and refreshing. It's a cold pasta dish for this time of year. Um, but I feel like iced mint tea is one of the greatest things on earth. <laughs> Um, iced, uh, iced tea made with mint is so refreshing and cooling. So if you are going out on a hike, um, and you have a good thermos, throw some of this tea that we're making today into your thermos with some ice cubes. And, you know, while you're hiking, you can have beautiful, refreshing rosehip mint tea. Um, why do we want to drink mint tea besides the fact that it's really cooling, um, which it is. Mint is wonderful for digestion. So if you have any trouble, or even if your child, again, this is another tea that is totally safe even for kids, safe for elders, safe for children. Um, if you uh, have any trouble with digestion, or if your kid has some uh, trouble with digestion, if you're prone to heartburn or acid reflux, a little bit of mint tea can be so wonderful for helping with digestion. Uh, that's why things like, um, you know, Tums and Rolaids and stuff like that have mint oil in them because those are helping to uh, um, reduce the acid from, from coming up, right? Um, uh, well, reducing the irritation anyway. So mint tea is wonderful for digestion. It's wonderfully refreshing and cooling, but also mint is fantastic uh, for strengthening the lungs. So um, I have asthma. And, um, and I have seasonal allergies, <laughs> but um, my asthma means that I'm always looking for herbs that are going to strengthen my lungs and prevent um, an asthma attack. And I really feel like all of the mint family does that. So plants are in families, just like you all have families, plants have families as well. Um, and uh, the mint family is like, peppermint and spearmint. And you guys have probably heard of chocolate mint and there's even apple mint and lemon balm, uh, things like that. All of those, uh, the mint family, oh, even bee balm, um, that really important plant that's so uh, important to Minnesota tribes. Um, uh, in in um, Dakota, it's called Hehaka Kapejuta, uh, elk medicine. And that's also what it's called in Ojibwe, but I can't remember how to say it. <laughs> but um, it's, uh, you know, a wonderful medicine uh, that that bee balm is, and that's a member of the mint family. And all of those are great. Uh, they make great iced tea, but they're also really good for strengthening the lungs. Okay, so we have the rose hips and we have the mint and they're fantastic. That's a wonderful combination, especially for an iced tea. You can drink them warm as well uh, during the winter. So let's say you bought, you know, in your kit, you were given um, a, a bag of that tea blend. Uh, if you don't use it all, um, in these warmer months, that's okay. Keep it and you can use it this winter as a warm tea, okay? So those are the two that are in your tea blend, but I also wanted to show you a few other um, amazing local plants that you can add to your iced tea blends. Uh, this is one that you've probably heard me talk about before. Um, you know, I always say, uh, I get asked a lot, like if you could only choose one plant out of all the plants, <laughs> what is your favorite? And that's almost impossible for an ethnobotanist <laughs> to, to do because they're all my favorites, right? And, and it's so funny because I noticed uh, I, I make TikTok videos and I noticed that on my TikTok videos, I'm always like, this is one of my favorite plants. <laughs> and so I'm always saying that. And I have people say, well, they can't all be your favorite. And I'm like, yeah, they pretty much are. <laughs> but nettles really is, uh, you know, if I could only choose one, 
this would probably be it because it is so wonderful uh, as a medicine. It's fantastic as a food. Uh, and you can make rope and cordage out of nettles. So if I needed a fishing net, um, I could get some uh, really tall nettles and process them to make cordage, uh, which I can show you guys how to do sometime. Um, but so uh, the the Dakota name for nettles is Cha'i Chakbehu. Um, the Ojibwe name is Mazanig. And um, that means, that might be intimidating to some of you, right? Because you've probably seen this all over Minnesota and you've always been told that's itchweed. <laughs> you know, that's what a lot of my Ojibwe friends say is like, that's itchweed. Um, uh, and, and that's what Mazanig means, right? And so if you look really closely here, it's, it's not the best picture in the world, but you can actually see those little stinging hairs all along the stem of the nettles. And those are even like on the little uh, petioles of the leaf right here. And even on the underside of the leaf, you'll see those little stinging hairs, okay? And you might be thinking, why would I want to use something that stings in an iced tea? <laughs> but the fact is with any crushing or drying or cooking, all the stinging effect goes away. Okay. The compounds that sting you that cause that stinging when you pick them um, are uh, easily denatured by heat or drying. Okay. So all you have to do is steep these nettles in a little bit of hot water and all the stinging effect goes away. And so that's what we do. We harvest fresh nettles. Um, uh, I, my favorite way is to do it at this young stage, like in the bottom right-hand corner. There's so much more tender and delicious at this stage. But if I could only, if I needed to go out and get nettles right now at the end of July, I would go out and I'd see that um, the, the plants look like this like you're on the left side of your screen. So I would only harvest the younger leaves at the top of the plant, okay? Very simple. You can also harvest these seeds. See these, these funny little whitish, uh, light green colored things on here. Those are the flowers and the seeds and you can harvest those and make those um, into tea as well. Or uh, you can make nettle pesto, like up in the top right here. Um, my husband is very famous for his stinging nettle pesto, which is uh, a fantastic pasta sauce. Um, uh, it's also It also makes a great dip, like for veggies and stuff. Um, but nettle pesto is wonderful. And one of the things that I really love about nettles um, is sometimes when, when we're eating nettle pesto, like maybe over some spaghetti, um, my husband loves to uh, put it with some grilled chicken. Uh, we're eating it and I'll, you know, my it's, it's like a dad joke with my kids. I'm always like, we're eating anti-inflammatory pesto, you know, um, we're eating anti-inflammatory spaghetti. Um, and, and it's true. Like it's silly to say that, but it's true because nettles are powerfully anti-inflammatory. If you or someone, you know, is suffering from arthritis Arthritis is all about inflammation, okay? It's inflamed joints. Uh, inflamed means basically swollen, okay? Or it builds up. And um, those swollen joints can be very painful. But a lot of illnesses are caused by inflammation. Arthritis is one, rheumatoid arthritis, of course. Pinched nerves are, are often caused by inflammation. Um, allergies are all about inflammation. Asthma is inflammation in the lungs. Um, even sometimes depression and anxiety are actually inflammation of brain tissues, okay? Um, and so I always say, uh, oh, neuropathy is inflammation. Lupus is inflammation. You guys, I could go on and on. So many, um, illnesses are caused by inflammation. And so we really, it's so important to manage inflammation and nettles are one herb that is great for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they make a wonderful iced tea or a hot tea. You would just follow the same directions. Just make a, a really nice, strong sun tea with it. Think of it just like you would, um, you know, if you, especially if you're using your tea balls that came in your kit, um, you know, think about that. You could easily um, uh, make a sun tea, a nettle sun tea. And if you really like 
your Lipton or your Lusianne, get this. You can just put your tea bags, those, Le those Lipton tea bags or whatever into your sun tea jar and go ahead and throw a couple bags or tea balls of nettles in there too. You will, it won't change the flavor that much. You'll hardly know that the nettles are in there and you'll be still be getting all the great medicinal um, properties of it. Okay. So if you're not someone like you're a little intimidated by these uh, traditional medicines and you're like, okay, I got to really ease into it and take my time. Um, nettles is actually a really good way to do that because they don't have any sort of bitterness. They don't have a really strong or offensive flavor. And if you want to go out and harvest nettles yourself, I really suggest doing it barehanded because we've always been taught um, that if you harvest nettles barehanded, you'll never get arthritis in your hands. Um, and so it's kind of a sacrifice that you make. Uh, you know, sometimes healing is painful. Uh, for instance, healing from trauma is uncomfortable and painful. Healing from certain wounds is uncomfortable and painful, right? Um, and instead of covering that up, uh, we can actually use a lot of really beautiful herbs to help us work through that. And, um, and nettles are a great way to do that. Okay. So, um, sorry, my husband just turned on the air conditioner and it's loud. <laughs> We have about a minute left on this steeping, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh would you would you say, Anita? I have. There's only a, there's a minute left for those. Okay. Awesome. Okay, I'll talk about one more plant, and then we'll finish up our tea. <laughs> so I I really wanted to get to this one because um, you guys have a lot of black elderberry in um in Minnesota and uh, it's beautiful. And right now the elderberries are green and they're starting to turn black. But a few weeks ago, you had a whole bunch of these white elderberry flowers or what we call elder flowers, okay? And these flowers are beautiful tea. They are fragrant, they're floral, they have the most beautiful sweet smell to them, and they make fantastic iced tea. And one of the best things is, is that elderflowers are super antiviral, just like elderberries. If you've made elderberry elixir with us um, as one of these workshops, you know that elderberry elixir is wonderful medicine. Um, it is powerfully antiviral. It's really great cough medicine. It's um, great for boosting your immune system. Elder flowers have a lot of those same properties. And um, actually we were um, in Northern Minnesota Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Anita's there showing her <laughs> elderberry elixir. Yay. <laughs> um, we were in Northern uh, Minnesota yesterday and the elder flowers are still blooming. So you still have time to go out and get some even now. And if you can't go out and get them, um, absolutely at any of the herb shops or um, stores in the cities and other places in Minnesota, they carry elder flowers, okay? And so those make a beautiful iced tea as well. Um, and then the last one I wanted to talk about is another member of the mint family that I mentioned earlier, Hehaka Tapejuta. Um, again, I can't remember how to say elk medicine in Ojibwe, but um, bee balm is wonderful iced tea. Now, when I say that, I will say that if you're going to make an iced tea with bee balm in it, kids probably won't like it. <laughs> because it has a really strong flavor. It almost tastes like you're drinking Listerine. Yeah. <laughs> now it's edible too. It tastes like a little bit like spicy oregano. Um, and so like, here's a beautiful zucchini dish um, with, some, uh, with some bee balm in it. Delicious. Uh, almost like a salad. You can use bee balm in salad dressings. Uh, and I really love the flavor, but I've, I have found that like, my seven-year-old doesn't love bee balm tea. He'll drink it if I put some honey in there, but he doesn't love it. Now, why would I want to give that to my seven-year-old? Why would I want to give that to myself? Bee balm is so antimicrobial. Um, if you make an iced bee balm tea, you can drink that to prevent um, infections 
uh, internally. And so like strep throat, bee balm tea is wonderful for strep throat. It's wonderful. Even, um, like if you know someone who has like a uh, gum infection, like gingivitis or something like that, or, um, uh, 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 like a tooth infection and maybe they can't get to the dentist right away, drinking bee balm tea can, and, or even swishing with it can be really, um, can be really effective in reducing the infection and, um, and helping to heal it. Okay. Uh, but it's also good for infection anywhere. And I actually really like the flavor, especially if it's mixed with rose hips and a little bit of honey, because that kind of cuts down on the really strong, uh, Listerine like flavor of this. Okay. So, um, okay. Awesome. I'm going to stop my share here and, um, Anita, if you want to, um, show us what you have there. Okay. Awesome. Notice how that has changed color. Um, what do you think? Can you smell it? It smells minty like spearmint, but with like, yeah, a flowery smell to it. Oh, it smells good. Yeah. A little <laughs> bit of the floral. Yeah. Awesome. Probably from the rose hips. That's beautiful. That's exactly what it should look like. It should have changed color by now, um, which it did. And so um, it's probably still kind of warm, right? Yeah. So we're just going to remove the tea balls from there. You can do that with a spoon or, yep. I'll just use it by hand because it's my tea. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just pour it over a cup full of ice. And you guys will see that it will melt some of the ice. Awesome. Sorry, I'm messy. Nope. It's just water. <laughs> Beautiful, oh my gosh. And um, now, Go ahead. If you, if you want to put sweetener in now, we could have, we could have put sweetener in already. Are you going to add some honey to that? Yeah. I actually usually use my elderberry honey for all my sweetening. Beautiful. So. Yes. That's such a great idea. And then you'd get some sweetness from the elderberry and you'd get those antiviral properties in there. That's a great idea. Um, so go ahead and add whatever sweetener you want. Uh, while you're doing your presentation, Woo! I made. Oh my gosh. So it's an old pickle jar. I put like five or six of these. You could kind of see them on the bottom sitting there. Then I'll set this outside and just leave it probably till overnight. So. Yes, absolutely. At least two hours, but I personally prefer overnight. And it's yeah. gonna make a beautiful, you can even see it changing color already. That's gonna make a beautiful tea. Awesome. So the quick method and the slower method. Um, so can you taste that for us and tell us what you think? <laughs> yeah. So this is without sweetener. So good. Yay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It's so delightful. like right now. Good. So right now, Anita is like, getting all the medicinal properties of that tea. Um, and she's also, um, she's, so she's getting the medicinal properties from that tea, but she's also getting a refreshing beverage and she's staying hydrated. And I can't tell you guys how important that is right now, this time of year to stay hydrated. So iced teas, iced herbal teas are a great way to get medicine into your family. Um, you know, some gentle medicine, just a little bit of vitamin C and a little bit of those immune boosting lung strengthening properties that are great for digestion, um, but also keep them hydrated and refreshed. And so if you, um, like the combination of the rose hips and the mint actually also has a lot of electrolytes. Yes, I said electrolytes. So like instead of buying Gatorade, which has tons of white refined sugar and also food colorings in it um, that are really bad, you guys, red dye has been implicated in most cases of ADD and ADHD. Okay. I, it sounds crazy, but 
eliminate red dye from your, your life. If you're, if you have issues with that or your child's life, if maybe they have some of those ADD, ADHD issues. Um, and, and it can even help children deal with, um, the, um, you know, the effects of uh, autism spectrum disorder, eliminate red dye from their lives, even for just one month, no Kool-Aid, no Gatorade, no Twizzlers, nothing with red dye in it. And red dye is hidden in a lot of places. Okay. Um, so you want to make sure like even pink yogurt has red dye in it. Cereal, uh, any cereal that um, has like pink or sometimes even orange um, uh, cereals, uh, you know, like Fruit Loops and Tricks and things like that, um, those have red dyes in them. Just try for one month to eliminate red dye from your child's life and see if you don't see a difference, okay? And so this is a way that you can get electrolytes and medicine, good gentle medicine into your child's life or into your life um, still add a little bit of sweet, you know, from the honey or the maple. Um, but you're doing it without any of those red dyes and you're doing it without any of the refined sugar. And that's amazing and wonderful. Okay. So, um, any questions, Anita, any thoughts? I think the only question I have is, um, can they add like fruit? Can they flavor it with fresh fruit and how would they yeah. do that? Great question. Yeah. So, so when we're making IC and, and I think all of you were given some uh, stuff in your kit to, um, for this. So I really like to, okay, there, there's actually a, um, let me see if I can find that actually. Okay. So I'm going to actually share uh, my screen with you all again, because I want to show you something that I love to make every year. Let's see here. Where is that? <laughs> um, no, I'm not finding it. Okay, so um, let me try it one more time. So I love to make a thing called agua fresca, okay? And agua fresca, oh, here we go. Good. All right. Share my screen. Okay, so let's talk about this for a second. I love to make agua fresca. What is agua fresca? It basically means fresh water. <laughs> And look at those beautiful agua, agua frescas. Now, all of those are, are kid friendly, kid safe, but beautiful, fun. Um, it's just a mixture of fruit, water, sweetener, and ice, okay? But when I make agua fresca, I make it with iced tea. So like the iced tea that Anita just made, imagine if you just added some orange juice to that, some grapefruit juice, some cranberry juice, to her iced tea, it would up the refreshing quality. It would up the uh, levels of um, of uh, 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 the um, stuff that's in Gatorade, <laughs> electrolytes. <laughs> that word just slipped my mind for some reason. But you know, it would up the levels of nutrition, and it would make it even tastier and more fun for your kids. So, um, so like a little bit of lime juice. Uh, in your agua fresca, what, what juice are you adding to your tea, Anita? Orange juice. Beautiful. And so did you add the elderberry in there too? I did. I added that too. So it's going to be really sweet. Let me taste. Oh, it's really sweet. Mm -hmm. Yum. Is, is it good? Yeah. It's really good. <laughs> Actually. Oh, I'm so glad. I know the color of that one doesn't look great because of the elderberry, but um, I imagine that it's it's pretty tasty. And and the thing is, is you just upped the vitamin C a bit too, um, but you made it uh, more full of electrolytes and more refreshing. One of my favorite juices to add to my iced teas is lime juice. Uh, limes are, of course, very high in vitamin C as well, and they're really refreshing. So um, you can make fruit uh, agua fresca and these fruit iced teas, fruity iced teas, um, with any combination of fruits, any combination of herbs, and any combination of sweetener. So look at this, all of these different fruits, whether it's 
cantaloupe or honeydew or watermelon or limes, strawberries, whatever. You can mix those with things like mint, things like hibiscus, things like rose hips and nettles, okay? And oh, I have mint in there twice because I really love it. You can even do things like cinnamon and lavender and rosemary in there. And then you can add sweeteners like honey and maple syrup, okay? So um, uh, let me just, this is a basic agua fresca recipe, okay? And so you can see, you can do one cup of fruit, okay? Whatever fruit you want, one and a half cups of tea, okay, of your herbal tea. So the tea that you guys all got in your um, kit uh, uh, is the um, mint and rose hips. So just one and a half cups of that tea, one cup of fruit, half of a juiced lime, just take that half a lime and squeeze it in there and then add a little bit of sweetener if you want. Sometimes you don't even have to. Like if you use watermelon as your one cup of fruit, you don't even have to add sweetener in there. It's sweet by itself. So you just take these ingredients and throw them into a blender. And oh my gosh, you guys, that's one of my kids' favorite things in the world, in particular with watermelon. He loves that. Um, he's getting all the refreshing nutrients from the watermelon. Um, he's getting all the medicine from the tea. And of course, the vitamin C uh, from the lime. And, um, you know, even, of course, maple and honey also have medicine and, um, you know, like amazing, right? So I love to mix my agua fresca and my medicine iced teas together. And that's what this is. Um, and, and I believe like you can do that with any traditional fruits uh, and, and, and um, medicine combinations. I love to do watermelon and mint together. Um, I love to do cucumber and melon together. And sometimes I'll do the cucumber melon with rose hips. So beautiful. I'll make the rose hip tea really strong. And then I'll add the cucumber and melon and just blend it up in a blender. And you wouldn't think that would work because the cucumber, we think of that as a vegetable, but cucumbers are actually really sweet. You know, um, I love to do pineapple and coconut water. Um, and uh, blend those up and then add um, some lavender tea or some of my bee balm. Uh, if you do pineapple and coconut with your bee balm tea, you wouldn't even know it's in there. You wouldn't even be able to taste it. It just adds a little bit of a background oregano rosemary flavor. So it's fantastic. And then of course, I love to do, if you, if you need something really refreshing, but also relaxing, you can do peach and um, lavender tea. You can do peach, like fresh peaches with lavender tea. So, so good, okay? Um, so any, any questions? Did that make sense, Anita? Yes, it, it does, thank you. Cool, no problem. I'm gonna put this recipe back up here just so you guys can all see it again. Um, and so, so with, correct me if I'm wrong, Anita, with their kits, they got the, the mint and rose hip tea, um, and they also got like a gift card, right? Correct. That for to purchase some fruit and sweetener, some honey and some fruit for their sweeteners. To, and they also got some tea balls. Awesome. So, for their so tea. what I would love to see, um, and, and I just, this is a request that I have, maybe a little bit of a challenge. Um, see what creative um, blend you could come up with, with your fruit, with your um, medicine tea that you got, um, and, and with maybe a little bit of sweetener if you want. See what beautiful, creative, tasty combination you can come up with. And can you send me that combination? All you have to do is Facebook it to me. Um, and even if you, especially if you send a picture, I'll share it on my Facebook. And um, uh, I can share it on Instagram too and um, show everybody what amazing thing you came up with, okay? All right, awesome. Any questions, comments? Nope, I think that's it. Um, thank you very much for everything and all your teachings. And I will get all of this sent out and forwarded to all of the people. 
Awesome. No, that's no problem. Yeah. Thank you everybody for listening to this recording. If you have any questions about anything in here, um, and of course we're not live, so you're not able to ask them right now, but if you have any questions at all, please contact me, um, send me a message on Facebook. I'm happy to answer your questions. If you're looking for a particular iced tea, um, like maybe you're a runner and you want something that's really great for muscles, um, for, for keeping your muscles hydrated, let me know. I'm so happy to share some recipes and to, to talk about stuff. And definitely please send me some pictures and recipes for what awesome things you come up with.